So now it's time to see the access method, which is, as the name implies, we're going to use a quantity in access. And the advantage on this is that we can analyze either A or B. So for example, if I use an access on A, we can use this as a constant and we get how the equation or our reaction reacts depending on the concentration of B. And not only that, then we do the same with B, we use this as an access and we will be able to analyze what happens with A. This is good because we can use it uh, independently, it only depends on A in this case and in the other case only depends on B. So let me say that we have A and we have B, we are reacting them, they will form products, as you can see it's one to one, and probably you don't know or they tell you it's elementary rate of reaction. So the rate of reaction of A equals that constant, which let me tell you is only K, because we're going to see later key okay, here and key with double commas here. Now, because we're using power models, we don't know what order is, so I will use a variable which is alpha with respect of A, a and beta which is with respect of B. So, let me continue. So I told you before we were going to use access conditions. So, what happens if I have A plus B and I'm forming products? and I have one mole of A and maybe 100 moles of B, uh, the concentration of A on time, maybe we're going to say that it starts in one and will finish, let's say it's almost done, one point six. So you got 90% conversion. And the conversion of B will be similar, but the concentration you will see that it's not. So you have 100 minus that point, it will be 99.1. So you got also 90% conversion, even though the concentration is not changed that much. Because, of course, you have a lot of excess. So technically speaking, we have, with respect to A, we have a, a tremendous change, almost uh, the total. Well, this is 90%, of course. But be sure just to see the magnitude. Here you have 90%, here I don't want let's say 100 you fed and you react 1 divided by 100 actually this will be 0 0.1 conversion with respect of B so it's a lot now why do I want to do this you will see why so if it is in excess I can I already show you why I'm going to take it as constant the final concentration will be similar to that one on the beginning so if I've got a rate of reaction that remember it was this one here guys. I'm just going to change this here, which is here. And I'm going to multiply k and well this times this. Uh, since this is a constant, let me tell you that this is a constant. Because you know that beta is yeah it, uh, I'm sure it's a variable but it's a constant variable. So for example if I'm using one or two or three uh, I mean that I'm not going to use different numbers, but if I have 100 to the 1, or 100 to the 2, or 100 to the 3, it's still a constant, guys. So, the whole set is a constant, and a constant times another constant is another constant. So, that's why I'm using k, comma. And once again, I want to tell you is the normal k we're used to, times the initial concentration of b to the beta power. So, essentially this one. And what I'm going to do, well, now I'm, we are ready to do analysis, for example, sorry about that, I'm changing too much. Uh, let's say you have concentration of A with respect to T, and you got all this data, and you will have all this data, of course. You can relate this data as it were only dependent on A. And then we're going to do the same for B, and we're going to get this, and then we're going to use these relationships and we're going to get our final k at the same time we got alpha and beta so our final product will be these guys our order with respect of alpha or a our order with respect to beta or b and the value of our constant rate so we've done it so far for b let's do it right let's pour same reaction 
But now we're going to have 100 moles of A and 1 mole of B. Let's say we have 90% with respect to B, so we will have 0 0.01, uh, what is it, 99 uh, of B, and we will have 90.99 of A. So technically speaking, is once again the concentration that one of the initial will be similar to that one of the final when we speak about A. So, we got the rate of reaction, A, equals that constant times that concentration to the alpha power. Once again, that alpha is, yes, it's true, it's a variable, but it's a constant variable. Once we set it, let's say we say it's first order, we're going to have any number, let's say, that, fun, that, that hunter example we said before here, to the one power, or maybe it's second power, you say that hundred to the second power, or even to the third power, so that same hundred power. So even though I'm telling you we don't know the value, that's why it's a variable, but it's constant, guys. It's either first order, second order, third order, whatever order it is, this value will be constant. So once again, this is my second constant, k double comma here, uh, which I have it here. So we have k comma one, which is the k we used before times the initial concentration of b to the beta power and we have the k double comma here equals the k concentration here the initial concentration and alpha so uh, let me go back remember we have this one and this one as you can relate already guys we have two equations here and not only that with the rate of data remember I told you we will have this time and concentration with this data we will get alpha and with this data we will get concentration of B with respect to time we're going to get beta so the only thing left for us to calculate will be our K okay so how do we do that we can choose whatever you want actually I will choose the rate of reaction which is here I already know CA it's certain power alpha I already got it beta I already got it so the rate of reaction I have it as theta. The only thing that is not constant or not known is this k. So just send this here and use a number here and you will get your constant at any moment. So yeah essentially at the end of the problem we are done and we have our constant rate here, alpha here, beta here. Which was the first question of course. We need to calculate the constant here, the order of a, and the order with respect to B. And the final product of course is our rate of reaction that if you remember we will be needing uh, depending if it is CSTR or batch or PFR. So once we have, or we have this we can apply it to these models. And probably you're asking yourself how can we use it? Well because the rate of reactions uh, or the rate loss do not depend on the reactor type. Once again, the example of the gasoline and the oxygen, they will react even though they are in a CSDR or if they are in a batch reactor or if they are in a PFR. They will react because it's the energy. You have a spark, you have a fuel, an accident, they will form a reaction. So, uh, the thing here is that you will need two experiments, of course. One, you will have CA in excess with changes in B, so you will have CA in excess, maybe you choose 100 moles and you will be starting with one mole of B and then with time it's going to lower and lower and lower so you got this set of data in the lab you get your double K here now you do the same for B, you're going to make it excess so let's put 100 here and one gram mole of CA I repeat the data here, it's going to lower of course the concentration because it's reacting with respect of time and as I told you having this data and this data you can relate them and find your K alpha and beta so yeah I know it's theory and the problem here guys is that the whole section if not the whole chapter it's more based in exercises and I think if I explain you you probably have no clue of what we are doing even though I explain it like theoretically but if you really want to get to know or see more examples, more problems 
be sure to visit my webpage and go to courses and get the reactor engineering course here go to solve problems and you will find at least two problems on the access method if not more but uh, essentially it's everything please visit here if you want to know more and next video we're going to be seeing the differential method so see you there What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.